Now if you are sewing the plain trench coat with no options, you get to have a bit of a rest. For everybody else, we're going to jump into the yokes. This is actually, the front yoke is step one in the pattern, but we are going to jump around the pattern a little bit so that I can show you things grouped together in a way that it makes it easy for me to film both a plain trench coat and one with all of the options all in one go. <laughs> so this here is the front yoke. The You want to have one lining piece and one uh, piece of your um, your main fabric ready to do the step and then we'll repeat it for the other yoke uh, because there is one obviously on the left and to the right side of the garment and um, uh, what you want to do first is make sure that you've got the pattern piece the right way up because this pattern piece here when uh, you don't have the pattern uh, paper pattern on it it's a little bit hard to know which is the neckline and which is the armhole. Um, the way you will know is by placing the pattern piece onto it. Wherever possible, we try and put the legend on the pattern piece so that it is, when it is vertical so that you can read it, the whole pattern piece is vertical as it would be on your body. So this is the armhole, this is the neck hole, and this is the shoulder line there. So I'm going to get rid of the pattern piece now and I'm going to place my um, front yoke right sides together so I've got my lining on top and my fabric underneath and I know it's hard to tell with this lining but they are right sides together and then we are going to pin and stitch along this curve here so from the neckline down the front of the body across horizontally out to the armhole and we are going to leave the shoulder line and the armhole and the neckline, so all of that bit there open. So I'd like you to pin and stitch using, um, uh, stitch all the way around here. So I've now um, stitched along the front and the bottom of each of my two front yoke pieces, and there are, we now need to trim the seam allowance so that there's not so much bulk, and there's two ways you can do it. You can either use pinking shears like I'm going to do now, and to do that I am um, cutting using the, the they're called pinking shears where they make these little triangles. Um, there's some available on our website or you can get them from most good suppliers. They're really fantastic for this. Um, and the reason I'm using pink shears is because if I trim across, if I trim away half the seam allowance, what it does is it doesn't just trim half when you go around the corner. All of these little points in trim slightly more than half so that when I turn this through, this here sits really nicely. The alternative is that you can um, just use your normal scissors and trim, um, a pr you want to trim it approximately in half. Um, now we tend to use a half inch seam allowance on all our woven garments, um, uh, but it does mean that on, uh, for lots of different reasons for different garments, but um, for um, this particular type of um, construction here, it does mean that you need to trim away half the seam allowance, which I know is a little bit of wastage, but it does allow us to get it really nice and neat, because this is a precision tailored garment. Um, and then in here, what I want to do is use the very tip of my scissors just to take out some little triangles. Um, or some just doesn't really matter what shape they are, but just some little shapes. And I'm re I'm only going like not even. I don't know if you can. It's so tiny, it's hard to see. I'm not even going halfway into the remainder of my seam allowance. I'm just taking out some little pieces so that when I when I turn this through, you can see it's not quite smooth all the way around. Oh, there we go against the white, that's better. It's not quite smooth all the way around. So I'm I'm kind of faux pinking share it. And then we're gonna turn it through and give it a good press. So I'm at my ironing board and when I turn this through, you can see it doesn't kind of just sit nicely on top of each other with it neatly folded at this edge here. It just sits all a bit kind of off because um, for most fabrics that you'll be using, your lining is a lighter weight than your outside. So this one is like a, a wool blend, I think it is. Um, I will check that and make sure at the beginning of the sew along when I tell you my fabrics, I get that right. Um, 
yeah, so it's a lighter weight, so this, this heavier fabric here pulls it along the seam line here. And this is a tip for every single time you press your fabric where you're using a combination of lining and fabric, and heavier fabric, is that what we're gonna do is, to, I'm gonna turn it to the front and I'm gonna finger press it along here so that the, the seam line is right on the edge there. Hopefully you can see that it's focusing in. There we go, hopefully you can see that. I want the seam line right on the edge of the fold. Um, and then when I press it, I'm gonna press with my lining on top. And as I press it, I'm gonna roll it down so that I'm rolling this, moving it um, upwards, I guess on this line here, so that then the seam line is right on the edge. I'm not going to just place my iron all the way onto the top of it. I'm just gonna start at the edge here and I'm gonna roll it, and it's a little bit kind of hard to do. And it takes sometimes a little bit of jiggling it around, but I'm trying to roll my seam here so that it's um, right on the edge um, as I do it. So that then, uh, once it's nicely pressed, this lines up again, because they're exactly the same size and shape pattern piece fabric pieces, they should sit exactly. Now, I'm gonna have to steam mine slightly to do that, and as soon as I do that, my my, um, my camera is gonna completely fog up. So I'm just gonna turn the camera off for a moment and steam it. There we go, so I've steamed mine now, um, and it now sits really nice and flat along here. If you are using a wool blend, or in fact anything at all, do make sure that your iron will actually steam um, and not wreck the fabric. I have tested mine on a scrap of fabric and I know that it is absolutely fine with um, the setting I've got my iron on. So um, now this lines up neatly and this is a flat piece of fabric. So repeat that to iron both of your front yokes. So I've pressed this and then what I've done is I've stitched using a, um, well I've actually used a one quarter inch uh, top stitching um, along there. Um, so I've stitched all the way down the front and along the side uh, for both front yoke pieces. Um, you can, uh, in the instructions, it says to use quarter of, uh, one eighth of an inch um, uh, top stitching, but because you can see my fabric's quite thick, um, my presser foot is just gonna slip right off if I try and do one eighth of an inch, which is about half of that, which would look fantastic on thinner fabrics, but on a wool blend, um, I would highly recommend that you do more of like a quarter of an inch top stitching. It won't affect the fit at all. It'll just be slightly further away from the edge. So the last bit is if you, on the, on the front yoke, is if you want to um, do the buttonhole, uh, and you don't have to, it's um, it's optional. Um, you want to put the um, uh, the pattern piece back on your fabric and don't try and line it up with the bottom corner here because um, you'll find, because you've taken the seam allowance off, it won't line up. Line it up with the top, um, uh, the top edges of the pattern piece and then I want to take a pin and I want to mark my buttonhole. And my buttonhole, I want it to go in that diagonal and depending on what type of um, method you use to do your buttonholes. I use an automatic buttonhole foot. So I only want to mark the the angle I want it at so that I can line my presser foot up with it and where I want it to start. And you can have it, I mean you can have your buttonhole here, 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 it can be horizontal, it can be vertical, there's, there's no um, there's no particular reason for it being exactly where it is other than um, if you put it, well well, actually there is a reason. So when you move your arms up and down or to the side, this front yoke is gonna pull a bit as the shoulder seam pulls. So there's gonna be stress placed on this bit here. And if you have your buttonhole like that, and you place your button right in the center, let's say, let's say that's your buttonhole. If you put your button right in the center, it means, let's hold, I'll try and keep my finger still and show you. It means as this moves around, towards up towards this diagonal of where your shoulder is this front bit can move a little bit without putting pressure on you could do a horizontal buttonhole which if you're doing some kind of military look would look really cool but as you put your button there as it tries to pull upwards in that direction there's nowhere for the button to move so then you'll end up with the um 
the thread that the button's attached by um, having quite a lot of stress on it. So if you sew it on really well and you're not planning on doing star jumps in your trench coat, then it'll be fine. Um, but otherwise, I'd recommend a diagonal buttonhole um, starting. Um, I usually start mine. Um, uh, um, I like to start it the same width of my top stitching in again. So if this is the edge of my fabric here, and then I've got my top stitching, which is really hard to see with the black. I'm regretting the black right now. Um, my top stitching starts quarter of an inch in, then I probably want my buttonhole to start another quarter of an inch back in there. Now, because my fabric's quite thick, um, this is um, when I place my pattern piece on top, my buttonhole at the moment, because I've also done my top stitching slightly further in, is going to start, if I do it where it's marked, it's going to start right on my top stitching, which is, I don't really like that. I want mine to start a little bit further back. There's no reason it has to start right there, so I'm just going to move mine back a little bit. So I'm going to mark these now. Now what I've done to mark it is I've placed one pin running underneath, and I'm just doing that. You could also use a tracing wheel or something if you've got one. Um, uh, but I've placed my pin so that it's on the same diagonal as the buttonhole marked on the pattern piece. And then I've put another pin horizontally where I want it to, to start. So when I put this in my machine, let's say my machine is like this, I'm going to put it so that um, I put my needle down at this point here um, uh, so that I'm in the centre of where I want the buttonhole to go. But that you need to check how your buttonholer works if you're using an automatic buttonholer and perhaps do some on a test scrap of paper first to check exactly whether you need to put your needle down right where those um, meet or slightly off to the side or your buttonhole, uh, there's some machines that start right at the back and move forward and then back. My buttonhole starts at the front, moves to the back and then comes back to the front. So that's where I'm going to do mine there and make sure that you align your buttonholer um, with the line of that pin there. So go ahead and stitch your buttonholes on both front yokes now. So I've now sewed my buttonhole into my um, coat here. Um, trying to keep the light on it there so you can see it, it's on a diagonal. Um, you can sew all your buttonholes at the end if you want to, uh, but some of the bits of the trench coat are really hard to get to and I would not recommend it. Um, I find it a bit of a pain sewing it as I go because I'm constantly switching from my walking foot, which is what keeps this from slipping, the wool versus the lining. Isn't that lining pretty now that you can see it properly? Um, um, and then back to my regular foot so that I can do my buttonholes. Um, but it is worth it so that then you don't have the kind of access problem at the end. Um, what I am going to do now is open up my buttonholes. Again, you wouldn't normally open up your buttonholes until the end um, because it keeps the garment really kind of close together. But because some of the bits of the trench are hard to get to, I would recommend it. I would not recommend leaving them till the end and then accidentally cutting something you don't mean to after you've spent a bazillion hours making this beautiful trench. So I'm going to put a pin into the very end of my, sorry I have to keep refocusing so you can see it, to the very end of my um, buttonhole so that I don't accidentally cut past it um, and I'm just going to put that um, so that it runs kind of, um, whoopsie daisy, uh, 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 perpendicular to the end of my buttonhole and then I could use I would normally use a seam ripper to go along that but um, I'm going to use scissors to make it um, because it's really really thick um, and again I'm going to use my um, uh, my thread scissors because they're really small and I'm just going to sharpen them again later it pains me to cut fabric with my thread scissors but I've just I've folded this oh it's so hard to see come on there we go. I folded it, stay focused, I folded it in half and then I've just snipped a little bit out of the um, kind of middle of the buttonhole, just enough so that I can get my scissors um, into the hole here and I'm going to cut along and by putting a pin in there it means that even if I get distracted by something I cannot accidentally cut straight past. I mean, it would completely wreck my thread scissors if I cut into that, so I'm not going to. But I've just opened then up half the buttonhole, and then I'm just going to put the pin into the other end. 
Um, you might not feel like you need the pin, but I never trust myself not to accidentally snip past something if the kids suddenly ask me a question. So there we go. We've now got my buttonhole open. Um, if you've got a fabric that frays, you might find you need to tidy that up or to um, seal the edges off in there. Uh, so repeat that with both of them. And then your front yokes are done and you can put them aside until later in the sew. We're now going to do the back yoke um, and back yoke lining. This is not the next step in the PDF. I'm skipping ahead now so that I can show you the bits grouped together that make the most sense. Um, uh, before you get started, make sure you've got your yoke, um, your main fabric, and then your lining. You'll notice that it says on the pattern piece, fabric cut one to the pattern edge, which is all the way down here for your fabric. But for the lining, cut to the inside lining marking, which is this dotted line here. So when you cut your fabric out, it will be this big, but when you cut your lining out, it'll only be that big. And the way I normally do that is I cut my fabric out first, and then I just chop along that line there when I cut my lining out. Um, if you want to keep your pattern pieces, um, you could tape them back together to use it next time, which is, I often do that. I've got pattern pieces that I've cut and then taped numerous times. Um, or you could just use the marking or fold them up so that you don't have to actually cut it. So what we're going to do first is we're going to work on the lining piece. So I'm going to get rid of my, uh, my main fabric piece for a moment. Um, and so I've got my lining piece, which is to this shorter line here. And then I want to get my back yoke um, uh, facing, which is a diagonal, which is like a, a V-shaped pattern piece. Um, and that will be cut out of your main fabric, not out of your lining fabric. And the reason for this is that this goes up, um, across the very back of the garment and um, uh, the... The fabric will be on top and then this lining will be underneath but because of the way the body moves you'll be able to kind of see little bits underneath sometimes and um, if you if you use your if you cut just two pieces of lining and stitch them together along the bottom and turn them through then every now and again you'll see the lining flash out along the back of your um, trench whereas if you use a regular fabric for this your exterior fabric for the facing and then we attach the two together along here and then we stitch the main and the lining together you'll only ever see as it flips up this facing so you'll never actually see the lining because it's um, unlikely to flip all the way up like that um, if, which is great if you're using a brightly coloured lining uh, which I do often on my coats but not on this one where for some bizarre reason I've used black um, anyway, make sure your um, your yoke is uh, face up and that you've ironed any crinkles out, which clearly I haven't done and I'm going to go do in a moment. And then place your back yoke um, face up as well. So both are right sides up and I'm going to place the back yoke just as if it's going to be joined on like that. So you don't actually place this on top and stitch like that because then when you turn through you don't have the point so instead place them both face up and then we're going to flip this up so now they're right sides together and how I'm going to do this is I'm going to align this point of the V of the back yoke with the point of the um, with the back yoke facing of the actual back yoke oh my goodness that's too many back yokes in one sentence anyway I'm gonna line them both up together and I'm gonna put one um, on top of the other so that the V's there match up exactly and uh, pin them together now you'll find that the back yoke is now oh, the back yoke facing is now pointy downwards and this is pointy upwards how do you do that well you just kind of make it happen so um, turn this along uh, along the edge there and you're going to pin there and do the same thing. Turn this along the edge here and pin there. So now I have pinned um, my uh, facing to my back yoke um, and it's not going to sit flat here. It's all You can see it's all wobbly uh, because of the two mishmashed points that are going there. Technical term that. Um, something to point out is that um, 
the this here is almost along the bias so you may find that one or both of your pieces of fabric stretch as you're pinning along here and you can see mine hasn't quite come all the way to the edge on that side um, yet it has on that side there should because you're going to stitch it at a half inch seam allowance there should be a little the, the fabric should be pointing out here over the edge so that at the half inch line that those two bits match exactly rather than on the side here you can see they've matched right at the edge and when I stitch here on my half inch seam allowance I'm going to find there's a little bit of a gap there I want the two bits of fabric to match exactly on the edge here now the reason that's done that is because my lining will stretch on the bias but this wool blend which is beautiful doesn't stretch at all um, now we can't when we're drafting a pattern unless we know in advance what type of fabric you're going to use we can't account for that on the pattern pieces so um, what you will need to do is be very very careful when you're pinning it not to stretch your back piece uh, mine's now stretched to the point where I cannot get it back which is always manipulating it for the camera hopefully because you're not trying to also film it it will just go nicely for you um, whereas on this side I've managed to get it quite close so um, what I will do once I have stitched this is I'm going to go back, I'm going to place my pattern piece back on top of it um, before I attach them together and then I will trim along the edge here to make sure that this matches my pattern piece. So I've now sewed this and I've um, had to have a little bit of an experiment with my fabric um, because it is not working nicely on my machine. Um, and what I've discovered for my fabric is that if I put the, um, the lining fabric underneath and my main fabric on top and use my walking foot, that the fabric moves together. If I have it the other way around with my lining fabric on top, which is quite slippery, um, the um, the bottom fabric moves and the top one doesn't or, or vice versa. I was like, it was just happening a little bit of a nightmare. So um, I finally managed to get mine working, which means I've butchered this bottom seam a little bit. But this is all part of sewing as you then find creative ways to hide stuff that hasn't worked. Um, and I can't unpick this because then it is just unraveling. So there you go. Um, we have exactly the same problems behind the scenes at RP as you do at home. Um, so what I want to do now is move on to the next step. I've got my... Um, oh, by the way, when you stitch this, um, I stitched um, uh, down one side and I got to the center. Um, and what I did when I was stitching it is I, I folded the fabric kind of like this so that it was... Um, uh, so that was sort of um, out of the way and I stitched all the way down to where the um, let me just see if I can get the light on that properly there we go to where my pin is which is here so like this so that it was um, as I was stitching I was just stitching a straight flat piece of fabric and then when I got to the pin there I put my needle in and then I moved all of this and twisted the fabric around and moved this big bobble um, here um, out of the way so that then when I was starting to stitch um, down the seam here that then that was all nice and flat so you will need to move this flap from there to there as you sew so um, there we go that's now finally thank goodness done and what I need to do here is at the very point I'm going to snip um, halfway into my seam allowance so that I can uh, fold this out flat and get a nice um, smooth bit here as I um, as I uh, as I iron it. Now, uh, depending on the weights of your fabric, will depend on which way you want to press this. Um, I am going to when I go to my um, uh, go to my ironing. Uh, my iron is I'm going to press this so that the facing um, uh, stays flat and that the yoke is folded. So I'm pressing my seam allowance up into. Um, the yoke and the reason I'm doing that is because this is a heavier weight fabric than this one so it's going to sit a lot nicer. Um, I'm also going to need to then place my pattern piece back on top and because this is stretched out of shape I'm going to have to trim along here so that um, then I don't have see this this bit sticking out over the edge um, I'm going to trim it back so that it is back in shape because now that it's stitched it's not going to unstretch itself um, but I have now a, a lining piece that's going to be bigger than my back yoke piece. So I'm going to um, press this now and then I'm going to trim, um, make sure that um, 
uh, this is now the right shape and ideally you wouldn't stretch this um, but you know it's a good thing I did because then I can show you how to rectify it <laughs> so I've pressed my V here and I've checked the pattern piece on top and trimmed up the bits that um, I've um, stretched and then now I've got my it's right side up so I'm going to place my um, my back facing piece sorry my back yoke piece right side down and um, I can't quite zoom the camera out far enough for you to see it uh, but I'm going to place that on top um, and then um, I need to line it all up nicely and then I'm going to stitch using a half inch seam allowance um, along this bottom V only. I'm not stitching any of the top or the sides, just along the bottom V using half inch seam allowance. Right, so once you've stitched along the V, then we do exactly the same thing we did with the um, uh, with the facing bit, is I'm just gonna clip part into the seam allowance. Now, this is not even cutting. My fabric is now, I've got two layers of the wool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna separate them and I'm gonna clip one and then the other. The only point of this is to um, is to be able to turn it through and have a nice um, V when it turns through. So I'm going to clip that. Now when you turn it through and you go to press it, which is what you need to do next, um, you may find that that halfway through the seam allowance is sufficient. You may need to come back and clip a bit more because you want it to when you turn it through the right way, uh, which I'll need to do on my um, ironing board, um, you want to get a really, really nice point to that. Um, so I will do that now and then um, come back and show you um, the top stitching. So I haven't actually top stitched yet. What I've done is I've just turned this through and I've made sure I've got myself a nice little point or as good a point as I can get with the wool. Um, but I wanted to show you what I've done with the seam allowance here. So when I turned it through, it did not, um, uh, it was really, really, uh, come again, um, this edge here was really, really thick because there was four layers of wool, the two seam allowances plus outside. Um, and so what I've done is inside um, I have, um, let me turn it back through so you can see, um, I have trimmed the seam allowance, let's rebalance the light um, here, so you'll see the, um, uh, I trimmed one seam allowance in half and left the other one flat. That's what I'm trying to say. So then my seam allowance is um, two layers close to the seam and then the outside is one layer. And that just, it just reduces the bulk. It's not in the pattern, you don't have to do that. Um, I just want this to sit really nicely on my back. So now I'm gonna top stitch along this bottom V. So here we go, I have um, top stitched along the bottom here and I have also done a vertical buttonhole um, at the center back doing exactly the same thing as I did with the front yokes where I've started it the same amount back as my top stitching is. Um, get that, there we go, now you can see that. Um, and I've already opened up the buttonhole. Um, again, the reason we do a vertical buttonhole is that it's gonna move from, this, from the top um, as you as you move your shoulders. So you want, if the buttonhole is here and this is moving, that the button can move um, up and down the buttonhole. You could do it straight across if you wanted the more horizontal, but it's gonna really put quite a lot of tension on that the button that's coming through there. So pop this aside and we'll use it later. So we're going to do the sleeve tabs now, but I'm using a, um, a faux leather for my sleeve tabs, well for the top of my sleeve tabs. Um, underneath I'm going to use my lining to keep it nice and, um, uh, nice and lightweight on the shoulders. But I want to do a, um, a bit of some, some fun detailing. So what I've done is I've stitched horizontal lines uh, along my sleeve tabs. And the way I did it was I um, did the first line starting from the point um, and stitched straight down so that I knew that I had um, the exact center of the sleeve tab. And then I've done the next lines, the width of my presser foot apart so that um, I got them um, as horizontal, no, what's it called? Parallel as possible. Um, and I know I could fit another one on the edge, but that will be in the seam allowance, so there's no point, so I've just left that. So I've done that on uh, one sleeve tab, and I did not backstitch the ends because they're gonna be inside the garment. I've just trimmed the threads off, um, and then now I'm gonna go and do that on my other sleeve tab 
Um, in fact, these are the shoulder tabs. I've been calling them sleeve tabs. Anyway, I'm going to do it on the shoulder tabs and the sleeve tabs. So I'm going to go and stitch that detailing now. That is completely optional and it's not in the pattern. It's just something fun I thought I would do. Um, so if you want to do anything fun on your tabs, go and do that now. You only need to do it on the right hand side of the fabric. So I've now done my beautiful uh, little stitch lines on all my sleeve tabs and shoulder tabs. These are the sleeves and these are the shoulders, now that I've got them the right way around. Um, and what I've done now is I've placed the, um, uh, the tab um, right sides together fabric with the, um, with the lining. So you can see I've got my lining and my fabric right sides together there. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to stitch along the long side and then the two pointy edges and down the other long side. So along the long side, across the pointy edges and down the other side there. I'm going to leave the straight edge open on all of the pieces so that I can then um, turn them through afterwards. I've now stitched for both of my sleeve tabs and my shoulder tab um, down the long side and across the two short sides and then I've left this um, no, <laughs> along the long side, across the diagonal and along the other long side, I've left the short side here open. And I'm going to show you the different kind of stages of the step so that I can show you them all in one go. Um, uh, what I have done first is I've trimmed the seam allowance in half um, so that it just kind of uh, reduces bulk, especially because I'm using this faux leather. Um, and then on the corners, well, hang on, let me trim this. There we go. So I've, I've trimmed the these edges here and then I'm going to um, chop off the corner. And I want, I'm going quite close to the stitching, um, but not all the way um, to it because um, I don't want to leave a hole, but I do want to leave it as neat as I can. Um, so I'll just trim down this other side. There we go. And then I'll just trim off this little corner here. And then what I end up with is the stitching quite close to the edge on the inside of the seam allowance. So then when I turn this through, I'll be able to, um, so if I, um, I won't do it on camera because it'll take ages, but if I turn that inside out, and then I use this to kind of um, poke this out on the, um, on the inside, I will get a really nice um, crisp finish to it. So um, this is called a point turner. It's just a little wooden, handy thing. <laughs> um, you can also use a knitting needle or a chopstick. Um, so I'm going to, I'll do that with that in a minute. Um, uh, this here is showing you one that I've already trimmed. Um, so I didn't need to actually do that on camera, did I? Anyway, I've done it. So um, that's what it looks like before you turn it. And then once you turn it, you'll end up with it um, uh, through, but all kind of um, uh, not nice so um, then I've I've done how I explained in the earlier video where I've rolled the edges to keep this um, uh, really um, uh, neat and crisp on the edge and then I've pressed it and then after I've pressed it I have then gone around so now it's nice and flat um, and I've gone around and I've top stitched it um, all the way down one side across the two points and down the other side um, this side will go in the seam allowance, so you don't need to stitch across that. So now I'm going to um, finish off the rest of these so they all look like that one, and then pop them aside to use later in the sew. Uh, before you put them away, actually, um, uh, one of the things that's in the pattern that I'm not going to do because I don't want it in the design of the coat I'm doing, um, is to do a... Um, uh, a buttonhole running, I guess it's, it's horizontally or is it vertically, I don't know, but um, along this way, along the the sleeve tab. Um, you can also do it on the shoulder tab, that's so that when you put your, uh, when you attach it, you can put the button through it, um, and that's, um, it's horizontal so that it can move in the same way that the yokes do that we explained before. So, um, you can do a buttonhole along there. I'm really not confident about my machine doing buttonhole on faux leather with a really slippery lining behind it. I think that's a recipe for me having to cut and re this again. <laughs> um, and um, so I'm not going to do a buttonhole there, but I could do. Uh, what Instead, what I'm going to do is when I attach it to um, the coat, 
um, I am going to, let's pretend this is the other side of the coat, I'm just going to stitch my button on and I'm going to stitch it through all layers so I will never be able to undo this once it's on my coat. Uh, but I'm okay with that. Um, I don't ever put great big gloves on and then try and get it through the armhole where you would have to undo this. Um, I would normally put my gloves on after I've got my hand into the coat. Um, so it's up to you whether you want to do that. I'm not going to. Um, you can also, it's not in the pattern to put a buttonhole on the shoulder tab, um, but you can do again if you want to. Um, it's instead I'm going to just stitch my buttons straight on. So now we are ready to put these ones aside to use later in the sew. Thank you. 